Wow, this is really tall. Hi, Misha here. And this is one we haven't talked about yet. Now we've probably referred to it, but this is the Kalashnikov USA KS-12 shotgun. And this is a 12 gauge, two and three quarter, three inch Magnum shotgun made in the USA. Magazine fed. This is a honking 10 rounder it comes with. And it is a copy of this gun here, the Russian Yuzhmosh Sega 12. This is the LE edition, so it has the side uh, folding stock, if I can do it. Boop. Remember recoil pad. AK action, this is the factory eight round mag. Pistol grip, flash hider, pretty standard. You've seen it on the channel many times. But while these were imported for a number of years, they were banned effectively because of sanctions in June of 2014. So we can't get them anymore. But now we have Kalashnikov USA that has done this copy. And it is pretty darn similar. Same type top cover, side scope rail, same AK type action, even the same simple sights, same adjustable gas system. This is the Russian flash rider or the, the Izhmash, the Izhask one. Little different than the, than the Molot. This is the tactical version, so it comes with a rubber ergo pistol grip. Side folding adjustable stock and hand guard with tri rail, although the rail sections are removable. And one thing they say about this is while the Sega over here, because it was built for a Russian military police contract, this was primarily built to fire either three inch magnum shells or two and three quarter double lot buck defensive stuff. So pretty heavy loads. It also has an adjustable gas system, one and two, but it's really meant for the heavier police military loadings. With the Kalashnikov USA, the settings are slightly different. We have H and L, heavy and light. Heavy again is meant for the heavy loads, but light is supposed to handle, you know, your, your Walmart stuff, your federal and what have you. So. We will put that to the test. The uh, Sega here is intermittent with the light stuff. That's just kind of how they are. Um, some days are better than others, but um, we'll see how this does with the light stuff. We have a couple of different types we'll try out, but we also brought out some defensive double lot buck just to ensure reliability and kind of help with the uh, help with break in. So yeah, we'll do a comparison and show our range footage and and give some final thoughts. And with that preamble, why don't we uh, cut over to the range and fire the very first rounds through the KS-12. Uh, KS-12, KS first shot with Magnum. <laughs> what? So the first test batch of five shots went through the KS-12 just fine with the factory 10 round mag. Keep in mind this was a brand new gun, never broken in, never fired before. Although it was set on the uh, L position on the gas regulator. That is how it shipped from the factory. Here's the ammo we were using. It comes in boxes of five. It's not three inch magnum, it's still two and three quarter. But it is defensive. Double lot buck. And uh, it has plenty of power to cycle any Samada we've tried it in. The only issue is the shells are slightly long. So in some magazine tubes, for example, that has high standard, we showed you early in the summer, the bullpup, it had issues just because of the length of the shell. But uh, it didn't in the KS-12 in its mag. And just to, for comparison, let's run five rounds through the 
SGL1294, the Sega 12 here with its factory 8 round mag. Now the Sega 12. And not surprisingly, no problems there either. But, these are known for working with the heavier defensive stuff. Let's really put them both to the test with some light loads. Jay had some 7.5 ounce and I had some 8. So I had slightly heavier ammo, but both of ours were uh, pretty light and relatively low brass. Check out. Alright, let me try this with some more light loads with a Sega mag. They had a pretty typical Sega stove pipe there. And that was it. Easy mag. Let's try the Sega with the light loads. Not what I expected. Okay. Good news is they're very easy to clear. So, initial trials with the light 12 gauge were pretty equal. Minor stove pipes, which means the cartridge is chambering, igniting, and beginning the cycle just fine. Even extracting okay. But then ejection is just a little, little too weak to always pump it out. So, that's just what it is. We'll keep testing. But uh, let's compare these two a bit. Looking at how they are similar and also how they are different. This has obviously a side folding stock. It is six position, having a hinge block on the back with a pistol grip. Still a standard paddle mag release scope rail. And this has a more AK-74M style stock, which has this little recess. And it's hard to push the button on when you're trying to do it one-handed. Obviously, it doesn't have adjustments, but it does have a nice cushy recoil pad. It too has a pistol grip and rock and lock mags, side scope rail. This has a pretty plain handguard. It's meant to kind of come up pretty high to protect you against any barrel heat. This here, really, if you look under the rails, it's a pretty similar handguard. And the rails can be removed. And both have threaded barrels. This one actually has a Russian Molot birdcage on it. Slightly different than the Izhmosh. Because the wrench flats are at the muzzle on the Izhmosh. And they are towards the rear on the Molot. Both are chrome lined as are the bores. Flipping them over. They both use a very similar, really the same Kalashnikov action. With the safety here. Pretty easy to actuate. They both have this sliding dust cover behind the bolt. Because of the larger 12 gauge shell. Both are on pretty heavy duty stamped receiver. 1.5 millimeter give or take. Both have pretty basic iron sights, notch rear, bead front, pretty short sight radius. And again, the hand guards are interchangeable. This is just a more simplified style. Both have a two position gas regulator up front. Again, both have rock and lock mags. In uh, <clears throat> Russia, magazine capacity is usually 5 round for the sporting guns and 8 round here for the police and military guns.
the uh, the Sega 12 was designed in the mid 90s and was first released in Russia in 1997 for both sports and uh, police military users and it has gone on to be adopted by such over there including Spetsnaz they call it the KSK basically meaning special carbine and it is a semi-automatic only because a select fire 12 gauge shotgun especially with an 8 round capacity is pretty useless their standard barrel links over there for the full length version it has a barrel known as the Sega 12S of just under 23 inches but their carbine version the Sega 12K has a barrel just under 17 inches if this were a rifle it wouldn't matter but because shotguns need a minimum barrel length of 18 inches this means the ones that were imported over here had to have their barrels extended out past 18 inches a bit so you know that's just one of those things you have to deal with these started being imported in their most hunting like guys with a trigger group moved to the rear and uh, standard hunting stock around 1999-2000 but they were considered pricey back then because they were $350 give or take while other Segas imported from Russia made at Izhevsk, Izhmash were 200 bucks or less give or take so they really didn't, did not become popular until more accessories and conversions started to come out and then Arsenal picked up the Izhmash line, the Legion line and then in 2011 we got a kind of a really great ruling from the ATF that said that pistol grips were considered a sporting feature on shotguns, even some automatics. So starting around 2012, versions with factory installed pistol grips started to come over. This was great because we no longer had to move the trigger group and they could take a standard military-esque buttstock. And uh, Arsenal, later Fime, would sell a basic fixed stock version. I think they called it the, the 12 01. And it just took standard AK 74 looking stamp bus stocks. But then they started doing this version here with the side folding stock. Now, one interesting note in Russia, having a barrel this short, the side folding stock when folded requires the safety be on because they're not allowed to have that compact of a gun with the folded stock so there's actually a small internal mechanism and when these 1294s came over they had it too although it's very easy to remove and perfectly legal to remove once in the USA and there were other importers as well uh, for example Legion USA had some interesting models and of course uh, RWC was a major importer of Segas, which is why the whole Kalashnikov US thing, USA thing kind of came to be. In June, July of 2014, Russian companies, many of them, ultimately well over a hundred, were sanctioned because of the whole events in Crimea. The US sanctioned Russia, as did Canada and most of Western Europe. And Izhmash was part of that Kalashnikov concern as it had started to become known as back in 2013. For a time, Molots were not sanctioned, although this would change in 2017. But suffice it to say, you could no longer get Segas. And so RWC, Kalashnikov Concern USA, or just Kalashnikov USA was established. But their beginnings were a bit of a rocky start. It took them several years to really get into production and even then it required some outside help from a couple of other companies and a little bit of restructuring. But this was their first firearms product they sold, the KS-12. And it is designed to be a close facsimile of a later production Russian Sega-12 
combat style gun because even some of the Russian guns have the removable rail handguards and it does come with a copy of the correct flash hider the barrel is as short as legal legally allowed and even several Russian guns have a collapsing and folding stock maybe not this exact type but uh, similar too now some other Russian guns ended up with a hinge top cover this doesn't have that and some ended up with uh, with the magazines kind of like a uh, Vepr 12 but that usually was quickly reversed and I haven't ever seen a 10 round Russian mag but that's not to say they don't exist they probably do especially for the detaching uh, bolt hole open mag version but uh, I prefer these uh, factory mags feature wise though the American and Russian guns are very much the same, mechanically the same, with one difference that I mentioned in just a second. But here it is apart, you can see, pretty standard style AK trigger, fire control group. This is obviously a little different up front because, well, it's a shotgun. Here is our bolt group with the... Kalashnikov long stroke piston. It's cut out at the top for the shell. It's also cut out in the back. This is the bolt, which is an interesting two piece head design. This is done to facilitate the 12 gauge shells properly so the lugs can rotate behind it, keeping the head in the same position. Carrier is, of course, its own thing, but very clearly in Kalashnikov style. It even has the spring-loaded spring detent, excuse me, in the back for taking it apart. Here's our recoil spring guide. Here's our moving cover. And here's our top cover with the extended port for the shells. So it's, it's very, very much like the Russian, except for one feature, or rather lack thereof, right here. On most of your Sega 12s and the SGL 12, there's a manual bolt hold open. It's in the same location on a Vepr 12 where the automatic bolt hold open switch is, but on a Sega, it's just a manual spring-loaded piece of sheet steel. It's not on the KSU, K USA gun, the KS-12, and that does lead to some issues when loading it, especially with a full 10-round or 8-round mag. Take a look. All right, Jay again with the uh, KS-12. I'm try to load it without holding the bolt open. I don't think it's going to work. I got it to do it with the, sec with the uh, Russian mag. But yeah, that one's tight. Alright, let's try this again. I'm going to go a little slower this time. Oh. Why is my face on the hinge? Just going to push the stop board. <laughs> There's a stove pipe on the last one. The issue is, these are rock and lock, so traditional AK style mags. So if I can do it one handed. When they're empty, it's, it's uh, not a problem. But when you have shells coming up where the mag is taller, it makes it very hard to insert on a closed bolt. Now you can physically hold it back, but that feels like you need three hands. It is much easier just to chalk it back press up on the catch and now it's open pop your full mag in and then just do that and you are good to go we also found that the sega ishmosh factory mags at least the two we brought were more reliable 
than the KS12 factory 10 round mag. Now keep in mind this is brand new. So it could just be a break-in thing, you know, polymer molding and all that. And it is metal reinforced, which is nice. We did have a couple of issues in both guns. Uh, check out an example of each here. KS12 giving a try with Jay. Six, and I got a stoppage in the magazine. That's the factory mag, so. Tap it a little bit. Yep, it is stopped. Stopped pretty hard. <laughs> this is uh, this is shooting this Rio, which is pretty cheap stuff. Rio target loads, so light loaded, 7.5 shot, and it seems that our stoppage is kind of in the. Uh, down in the magazine, so I think we're gonna have to stop there. I did bring out Sega 12 ish mosh mag, so we'll give that a go. Alright, the Sega with the KUSA mag and the light ammo. What that was? Stop casing. Alrighty, well, there's that. <laughs> Was stuck casing or stuck around? I don't know. That was a, that was a different one. Never have had that happen before. I got a couple left. We'll go ahead and try to finish it out. We are still recording. Yep. Good there. No. Still pipe. Still pipe. The usual. I think that's the last round. Yep, that was. So, yeah, we had better luck with the factory mags. One thing I noticed, too, if you look at when they're empty, where the angle and distance is between the feed lips and the follower, it is larger, greater on this than on the KUSA. Now, that would provide a little more spring pressure probably but it only exacerbates the hole not having a manual hold back because the rounds will be feeding even higher we had no feed issues in the KUSA with the Russian mag when these are still available and we didn't have a ton with the US mag to be fair and honest but since it did happen in both guns, the fault would seem to be in the magazine. So, uh, yeah, let's run a few more light loads through the KUSA. Because, you know, they say it's better tuned for low brass than the original gun. Okay, one more time with the KUSA 12. I was hip firing that, by the way. Yeah, that's probably gonna do it. We'll see. Alright, All right, so let's put it back on the shoulder. I was just curious if that'd be, it'd be enough to rob it, recoil energy on it, and stove pipe it. It did. Stove pipe on the last round. So, yeah. I think we're just yeah, that the same. I think it's the last round coming up, the round underneath it pushing it out, and then there's not that last round. That's why the last round doesn't yeah. quite clear. I Almost. Yeah. Let's try the KS12 with my uh, A down. <laughs> like you, it's stove piped on the last right on round. The last one. Huh. Yeah. I've had that on my Russian Sega too. So it did okay. It mostly cycled and mostly had stovepipes on that last round as I discussed at the beginning of the video because you just don't have as much pressure with an empty mag on the exiting shell casing is when it's feeding. 
And I'm not making excuses for it. I do think it handled better because the original Sega, and I've owned several over the years, original hunting configuration ones, the fixed stock SGL-1201, and this one here. And they've all been picky, at least pickier than a Vepper 12 with uh, lighter loaded ammo. In fact, just, you know, so you can see it for yourself, here are some clips from a previous range trip of it doing much the same thing. Sega 12. Out of my gun. There you go. You're good. Still fight. What kind of ammo is this? Federal. Value packs. Yeah. Don't have enough energy to cycle. No biggie. Yep. Sigma 12. Nope. So fight. Four. Good old value packs. Mm -hmm. Good. Mm -hmm. It's just a fan of double shots. That's what it is. <laughs> so Jay and I really both feel that the KS-12 is better, if not 100% perfect with lighter rounds. And again, there's a whole gambit of 12 gauge out there. So just because it doesn't work with a couple doesn't mean others won't. And with heavier stuff, it works just fine. So the only real complaints we have, the build quality is, is good. Uh, it has more of a matte finish than the Russian. But the rivets and stuff and everything that feels good. Uh, triggers perfectly fine on it. Scope mount has all the right features. I do like that it comes with the right uh, muzzle device, flash hider, what have you. Mags click in, at least when they're empty, very easily. The bolt travel and everything is plenty smooth. We've done a, several videos in the past, actually, on the KR9, the 9mm carbine that Kalashnikov USA released after this. And we have nothing but good things to say. But on the other hand, there's not a Sega 9 in the country to really compare it with. Having a Sega 12 in the country, we do have a comparison. Now, personally, and this is just me, I definitely still like the furniture on the Sega better. This side folding stock is just your classic and really cool one. And this is a little more modern-esque. I mean, it adjusts easy enough. And it's pretty tight. You press it up to fold. I don't know if I can do it one-handed. Pistol grip's comfortable. This has a standard grip. And it feels reasonably well built for the price point. And that is one thing. Ever since the sanctions, prices on Vepper 12s and Sega 12s have been going up, up, and up. And these are at least kind of at pre-crazy pricing. So all in all, while on that 100% perfect outing, with the ammo we were using, I don't think we really expected it to be. In fact, Jay said several times, it is a Sega 12. It handles like a Sega 12. And that's kind of what we saw with the KR9 too. Because these are such close copies, they inherit not only the positives, but the negatives of the parent design as well. So they've done what they could to help with the ammo situation. But if they go too far in the other direction, making it for light loads... Then if you try to shoot defensive loads in it, especially 3-inch magnums, it will beat itself to death. And uh, no, one, no one wants a cracked rear trunnion. So it's, it's a balancing point, and I think any of us who've owned some auto shotguns for a while understand this. It's just kind of part of it. So, what about this compared to the Vepr 12? Well, since the KS-12 is so close to the Sega-12... I'm just going to say that we've done a pretty extensive video in the past comparing the two, the Vepr 12 and the Sega 12. So if you're interested in, in more of that, check out that video. We will link it in the uh, description. But uh, all in all, we found this to be a good analog. It has all the good handling. One nice thing about the Sega 12 and thus the KS-12 is they are very lightweight. 
under seven, excuse me, under eight pounds, usually seven and a half to just under eight, whereas the Vepr 12 is, is closer to 10. The Vepr 12 is probably built a little tougher, but this is a little more compact and handier, lighter, and, um, you know, some people probably do like the rock and lock better. I think for the shotgun, the straight end style probably does still work better with the Vepr. But, you know, there aren't a ton of mag fed shotguns on the market. Even fewer AKs. There's that Chinese copy of the Sega 12. But this is a true combat grade, not a commercial grade like, say, the MKA. 1919 AR-15 shotgun. Now, this one was made for military police use in Russia and has been adopted outside of Russia by Indonesia, Ukraine, and a few other special forces and military police type units. So it has seen real field use and has proven to hold up just fine. And with that, we kind of conclude our afternoon review. We shot it, did what we could think about it, and, uh, Mostly positives. Again, the only really negatives we can say, lack of a manual bolt hold open. And I would actually like to break in the KUSA mag a little more before I give a final verdict. But since the Russian mags are combat proven, I would mostly count on these right now. And these would be more of a range mag. Plus, as I said at the very beginning of the video, good grief, they are long check it out for just two more rounds this is where you're at hang on let's put it over here Doot. yeah check that out just two more rounds and uh let's see more inches you add on and that really does seem to matter so all in all we like the russian mags more but uh, they did a really good job copying the Ishmash flash hider, at least. And as for the furniture, not our taste, but this is the tactical model. They have a standard KS-12 model as well that has more basic furniture. Not as many rails up front, and just a basic pistol grip and stock in the back. So there you have it, folks. If you have any questions or comments, or if you have owned a KS-12 for a while, please uh, share your experiences below we'd like to hear how it's held up over the years for you because this is pretty new to us as always if you could like share and subscribe and if you'd like to help support the channel please check out the link to our patreon page this is misha and also on behalf of jay we will both catch you very soon next time